found a code listing the other day that number one excited me and number two, I found some areas for improvement. I want to walk through this with you because I want to show you the things that I liked and then let's see if we can come up with some ideas to perhaps make it a bit more secure. So first off, I've shortened the code listing a little bit by removing some of the, you might say, noise to make it easier for us to focus on the parts that maybe perhaps need a little bit of assistance, as well as to point out the parts that I thought, wow, that's a really cool idea. I also changed the name of, as you can see, the iScript to more appropriately identify what it does. So first off, what did I find exciting about this code? Well, number one, it's an iScript. And anytime I hear an iScript, I get excited because there's so many things that you can do with iScripts. And by the way, if you want to know more about iScripts, take a look at our blog post. I'll go ahead and put the link in the comments. We have a couple of blog posts that specifically describe iScripts. What are they as well as what you can do with them? Second thing that excited me about this code is that it's leveraging dynamic execution, which is a key feature of application classes and application packages. It's what makes application packages different from function libraries. Function libraries, you must declare them and then you call them every single time. It has to be hard coded. Application classes, not so much. We can dynamically invoke application classes, meaning we don't need to import the application class before we call it, before we use it. We don't even need to know the name of it. That's how all of the modern frameworks work. That's how Integration Broker works. That's how event mapping works. That's how the approval workflow engine work. All of these frameworks require dynamic execution and that's one of the key values of application classes. And that's what we see here. What we see is an iScript that has as its parameters, a package name, a class name, a method name, and then a delimited list of parameters. What does that mean? That means this iScript can invoke any application package, application class, method within the PeopleSoft system, as long as Looking at the design here, the constructor does not require any parameters and the method parameters can be coerced into a string. Impressive and so scary. <laughs> can you say open relay proxy invoke any code? Yeah, that's the part that scared me about this code listing. And this is why I'm bringing it to your attention because it's so easy for you and I to come up with these great ideas that completely ignore security ramifications. So what are some things we could do that would secure this code? Well, number one, it's an iScript. So only grant access to the appropriate people through permission lists. If nobody has access through a permission list, then nobody can invoke this iScript. Okay. So we can secure it by making sure nobody can use it. <laughs> okay, what about those people that are actually supposed to invoke this iScript? Is there a way that we could perhaps secure this? Well, one idea is to create a registry, a registry of allowed application package class method combinations, perhaps stored in a table. And so when you receive these parameters, you're then validating against that list of known parameters. The package name, the class name, and the method name. This is what we might call sanitizing your inputs to make sure that they can only invoke methods, classes, etc., that you pre-approve. Or here's another idea. We see that the object is in any, any type, or another type that we might use with that would be object. But what about this instead? What if it were an interface? Then the only classes you would be able to instantiate, create, would be ones that derive from that base interface or base class. That would further restrict the code available or the code that could be executed through this iScript. So what do you think? Do you have other ideas for securing this code? If so, share them with us in the comments. Now at JSM Pros, we have a whole library of people tools tips to share with you. Check it out at jsmpros.com slash all access to get access to all of our recorded courses, videos, activity guides, downloads, everything. And be sure to check out our live events as well. We teach people tools topics like this every week. Or here's an idea. Do you have a group you'd like to train? Give us a call and let's get something scheduled. Now, if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe for more content. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode.